Hi, everyone. Today is Monday, December 8th, 2014. Welcome to the newest episode of What's New in Google Maps for Work, where we bring you up to speed on new resources and capabilities offered to Google Maps for Work customers. I'm Brad Songer. I work on the Google Maps team here in our New York City office. And like every episode, I'm joined by my colleague, Ajay Hamnani, joining from Google's worldwide headquarters in Mountain View, California. Ajay, it's always good to be with you. What do you have for us today? Thank you, Brad. It's always good to be here. And today I will cover three topics. I'll start off with the sign-in experience in Maps API, pretty much like what we have on Google Maps. And one of the main benefits is that you're able to save places. Next, I will talk about localized street addresses in the response that comes through Maps API web services, making it all the more useful for our users. And finally, we'll get into a little bit on the new light mode in Android Maps API. People, uh, myself included, have been signing into Google Maps and saving places they found on Google Maps for a long time. Uh, so let's start learning about how the Google Maps for Work customer can utilize the sign-in experience within their own applications. Sure, Brett. And so if you've been saving places on Google Maps, now you can view those places in a Maps API application when sign-in is enabled. So we're pretty much looking at a map that's tailored for you, right? And not only that, with this feature, you're also able to now save places that appear on top of this Maps API map for later viewing. Let me use an example to demonstrate this. Let's say I run a coffee chain and I have a Maps API based store locator map. I can enable sign in and this is what a sign in user will see. So first off, as you can notice, the controls appear a little different. The zoom has shifted to the bottom right, and instead of a slider, it's a plus and minus symbol. The map type appears on the bottom left instead of the top right. And also notice that I'm signed in with my Google account. And so right here, if you notice, this star-like marker is a place representing the office location where I'm at uh, that I had saved when I was at Google Maps page a few days back. However, it's now appearing in a star locator app based on Maps API with sign-in enabled, right? And since it's a store locator app, obviously it's gonna show some of the locations, uh, in this case of the coffee place we're using in our example. And notice you see this save to Google Maps link. Now with this marker, there's a place information that's embedded, and I'll show you that in just a minute, that makes it possible for us to save this and view it in, a, in the future in a different map. So let's jump to the code and see how all that magic happens. So first of all, when bootstrapping the JavaScript API, you will need to make sure that you use the sign in parameter and set it to a value of true. This will enable sign in. Next, for the markers for which you want to enable the save option, you embed a place object like the one here. Now a place object is represented by a place ID and the ID you can get by running a places query, for example, text search and a let long value right here. Now, there is another option. Instead of a place ID, you could also specify a query where you would include the business name and the street address, for instance, um, giving you a whole new option. There are some concerns around accuracy here. So ideally, you want to use place ID, but it's always good to have a second option. And there's another cool thing that you can do, which is adding attribution to those places. So what happens is when you add an attribution like what I have here, AJ's Coffee Company, for the example we're using, and this particular place is saved and viewed on a different map in the future, the attribution will come up. This is great for businesses so that their users are reminded where they found that place initially. So in summary, the benefit for the users is that they could be saving places that matter the most to them and be viewing them in the future on any map through Google Maps, Google Maps Mobile, and even Maps API based apps where sign-in is enabled. And for the businesses, this means that their places could always be available in the maps of the users wherever they go. So it's essentially a win-win for both parties. So I can see this becoming a feature that end customers really appreciate having offered to them. Uh, you mentioned a coffee shop, but I can see real estate being another popular use case, or maybe even a government agency wanting to promote locations of free public services to their citizens. So yeah, I can see this kind of personalization uh, being a huge win, and exactly like you said. Uh, let's hear more about personalization, uh, specifically some of the features that would benefit the international user. Sure, Brett. So let's go to our next topic, which is localized street addresses. Now, in simple words, street addresses that come in the response of Maps API web services like Geocoding API, Directions API, etc., will now favor the local language, as in the language of the location being searched. Let me use an example to show this. 
Let's say a Japanese user does a geocoding query for one market street in San Francisco. Now, in the past, he would have seen this kind of response. Now, it's not very useful if he was trying to send a letter to this address. USPS will not understand this. Or if he was traveling to San Francisco and had used a travel app to geocode this address, he will not be able to get help from the locals to get directions because they will not understand the words in Japanese. And the words certainly won't match the street signs, which is why today we have localized the responses from services like geocoding, directions, distance matrix, making it more useful while still keeping it relevant for our foreign user. In this other example, I'm trying to geocode Eiffel Tower Paris while the language is set to Bahasa Indonesia. And so as you can see, some of the address components have been translated into Indonesian. Like for example, Eiffel Tower is now Manara Eiffel and France is translated to Prancis. While some of the other address components are still relevant to both the user as well as any French local whom the user could be asking directions from. And I think it's worth emphasizing this feature is already native to Google Maps in a desktop environment and a mobile environment. We've just now offered that to developers through the API. But let's talk more about mobile. Uh, Ajay, what can you tell us about the Android Maps API light mode? Sure, Brett. And so with Google Play Services 6.5, there are some good enhancements to the Android Maps API. And one of them is the new light mode. For those of you who have used Static Maps API previously, this is basically that, but now inside of Android Maps API, making it a more native experience. So with light mode, you can have a bitmap image of a map centered around a location of your choice, and you can draw overlays like markers, polylines, polygons. And the great thing is all this is happening over the client side, and so you have complete control over all these objects. Now, this is ideal for scenarios where a map image would surface instead of an interactive map. Think of use cases where you want to have multiple maps in a stream or even map thumbnails. This could also work very well on some low performance devices. So in other words, if all the benefits customers like about the static maps API for building applications for a desktop browser, the Android Maps API light mode, it brings those same capabilities to a mobile experience. And customers just need to make sure they're using Google Play services version 6.5 or later. Now, I know that's all we have to cover in detail for today's episode, but Ajay, I know you've already begun working on our next update. So what might we hear more about in our first episode of 2015? Sure, Brad. So one of the things I plan to cover in our next episode is the Java Client Library for Maps API Web Services. Think of it as a wrapper that helps you make calls to services like Geocoding API, Directions API, etc. And it also takes care of a few things for the developer like rate limiting, making sure you stay within the QPS limits, retry on failure when you encounter the 500 server errors, authentication, and all that good stuff. So essentially, it's helping you focus on creating functionality rather than worry about exception handling. Ajay, I want to thank you for the time you put into today's update and all the updates we've gotten from you in 2014. Uh, I know I speak on behalf of all of our customers when I say we appreciate the time and we appreciate the clarity on how you kind of communicate these things to us. So. Uh, thank you. You are a professional. Um, and everyone else, that concludes our last episode for what's new in Google Maps for Work in 2014. Uh, thank you for spending your time with us this year. Thanks for being a Google Maps for Work customer. Uh, please do enjoy your holidays, and we'll see you again in 2015. Thank you.